All right. Got to figure out where to put my big head. Okay, so this is uh, our first um, Excel uh, introduction. And I'm just going to try to work you through some of the basics of using Excel to uh, mess around with and organize data. Um, so we've got uh, two tabs here. I'm going to first work through um, this kind of intro tab, and then I'll give you another shot at uh, applying this stuff um, to the, specifically to the concept of standard deviation. So let me just start by reviewing. You've got some um, basic math kind of functions in Excel. So if you put in equals 5 plus 5, uh, that's going to give you uh, the resolve is 10. And up here you can see 5 plus 5, that's what the is in the formula, and then that's what you get there. Um, and you can also uh, do subtraction, multiplication with the asterisk, divide, and then you can also do um, squares. Um, so if you take 5 and go caret 2, that would be 5 squared or 25. Okay, so let's um, start working here with the um, test scores that I've set up. And I'm just going to work through a number of uh, mathematical things you can do in Excel um, and also some um, uh, formulas, or sorry, functions. Okay, so um, if we want to get started here and, uh, and format this, uh, I can grab this whole area and I might want to center these. Sometimes it's easier if things are centered. So I come up here and hit the um, centering tab or button. Um, I can also bold these and underline control B and control U. Um, that gives me the headers there that are now underlined. Okay, and then let's work through some of these um, functions over here. So if I come over here and type in count, and I can type it lowercase, but if I start with the equal sign, it's going to make it into um, a function and capitalize it. And I didn't tell it what to count, so it's, it's going to swear at me and say, what the heck? Um, but if I say count, and then left paren, left parentheses, and I drag over this range here, it'll fill in a formula. And I can put that there, and it'll give me the count is equal to 9. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to call this just count, and then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to capitalize it so you know it's a formula. Then I'm going to come over here, and in this cell, I'm going to type count, left paren, drag across that the column, that range within that column. And then I, at this point, where it's H4 colon H12, I can either hit enter and it'll put the right paren or I can put the right paren myself. So I'm just going to hit enter. Then if I go and mouse over that cell, up here it shows me um, what it's counting. Also, if I click on that cell, it'll show me in color. It'll highlight the, the range. The array is what Excel calls it that it's getting the count for. And count is just basically n, counting up how many observations. Oftentimes in statistics, we would just call that the n. Okay, and then a snazzy little thing is if I come here and I grab that little corner and I pull to the right, it'll copy that formula and it infers that I want to do the same thing for this range and the same thing for this range. So if I click on this, it'll do that. And I hit escape to get out of that. If I click on that and I hit escape to get out of that, it's getting the count for those different um, different things. Okay. Um, then let's do this next one here too where you're going to get the sum uh, of a bunch of things. So I'm going to say this is the sum. Sorry, I'm just going to do it as a, as a formula. So I'm going to say this lowercase I'm going to say equals here and then I'm going to say this plus this plus this 
I'm going to just keep going. Okay, somewhere I had a typo. I'm going to assume it can correct that. So I'm going to click on that now and see if it got it right. Yep. So those are the things it's adding up. Now remember, if I double click on that, if I start typing, it can mess that up. So if I go Control Z, that backs me out of it. And then also to back out of that, showing what's in that cell, I just hit Escape. Okay. And then I can come over here and I can copy and paste that and it'll figure that out what I'm adding up. Okay, then so that's the count there. I can also do the same thing for these columns and just to just to make sure you understand anything going vertically we call a column. Oh, I said that wrong. Yes, anything vertically is a column and across are rows. So I've got the sum here for the um, columns but if up here I want to get the sum for the rows I can do the same thing so just equals this plus this plus this and then enter and I got that and again if I want to copy that to other cells I can go control and then paste paste but an easier way to do it is I grab that cell put the mouse on the lower right hand corner and I can just pull down and it'll copy those formulas. Okay, now that's kind of a hassle, right? When you have to highlight each and every cell. So there's, we can do that with the formula and a range. So if I go sum, and here I go equals, and now I can drag across that range and hit enter. Oops, what did I do wrong? Let's try that again. Equals sum. There we go. Okay, so just some formatting things here. See how the sum, it's now right formatted? Um, if I highlight these columns and I come up here, I can specify everything that's going to come in those columns is going to be centered. The other thing I might want to do is come in here and put a line. So if I come up, come up here to the font tab, and I select the little grid box thing, I can put um, a thick bottom border there um, to kind of separate my statistics from the actual data points. Okay, and again, if I wanna move this over to these other two columns, I can just grab that corner and then pull to the right. All right, and you should see that doing sum with math or algebra and then doing the sum with the formula, I get the same value. Okay. Then here I'm gonna come along. Uh, next thing I wanna do is get the average using algebra. So I'm gonna just say, um, this is the average. So the way I would get that, just using math, is I would take the cell that has the sum, which is the 555, and then divide by the count, which is there, and I get, and remember if I double click on it, it shows me the two cells values that I'm working with. So that's the way I can get the average is taking the sum divided by the n. Okay, and then I can drag that across so I get that working the same for the other ones. One formatting thing you should know is you can adjust how many decimal places show up. If I don't want um, all those decimal places, I can come up here and adjust it in the number tab. Um, and I just reduced it so it's only two after the decimal. Okay, so that's average. Um, and then I can also get average as a, and I'll put it in caps here. Um, I can get average as uh, a formula. 
So I just hit equals, and then I can grab all these. Whoops, well, I did something wrong. Okay, I get that, and I should be getting the same thing with the formula um, as I do with the um, the math calculation. All right, let me show you one other little trick here. Um, this has to do with the relative versus absolute references. Um, so one thing I can do is set up this sum and I can use this for, or I can even go up here to the count. Let's start up with the count. And let's say that I always wanted to refer to this 4 to 12 range, right? Regardless of what statistics I'm doing down here. Well, if I come up here and put in a dollar sign right before the 4 and the 12, what that does is it locks the reference so that SPSS doesn't try to move it down as I go down the line. So let me just show you the difference. So here I got a locked reference. Here I don't have a reference. So if I want to copy that, that count, and put it here, it would still get 9 because it's still referring to that same range, right? But here I didn't do that. I didn't put those, I didn't lock those uh, row values. So if I copy and I paste this down here, it's now adding up a different set of things. It's not referencing the same range. Okay, so I'm going to... Uh, so one nice thing, I, I can copy that across, and that's, or let me, before I do that, sorry. So now I'm counting that same range. Well, if I have if I want to get something else, let's say I want to calculate the median here, what I can do is just copy this, that, the thing that has the, the absolute references here, and then if I type median, I don't have to worry about, whoops, I did that wrong. Got to put an equal in front of that. If I type ah, equal median, that's going to grab the middle number. The median is just the middle score at the 50th percentile, um, so which would be 60. Um, but you notice it's got that same range. So when I click on it here, it's worked. Okay, now you'll notice if I drag this over here, or copy and paste this over here, um, it is still using that absolute reference, so it can um, figure that out accordingly. So the short story is, once I've got that here, I can just drag it across, and because it's based on that absolute reference, you'll get the same thing. Now, just to keep it consistent, I'm going to go across here and put in the dollar signs so I don't get um, whoops so I don't get confused at some point okay so this is median using the formula so I'll put it all capital letters all right then next we have the mode so I'll just type mode here and we're going to come over and um, get the formula for the most frequent score so I can do this two ways I can I just type mode and then I can come up here and grab that that whole thing and that works or if I want to use my the absolute reference trick again I can just Watch this, I can go mode, but then when I want to figure out what is going to be in there, I can come up here and just highlight this. Oops, I guess that's, well, maybe it's not going to let me do that. I'll try that, mode. Yeah, no, it's going to get confused. Okay, so if I copy and paste that median formula, I can just change this to mode, and because it has the, the absolute references, it'll um, still get the right number. 
All right, so it just happens to be in this case that the mode and the median are the same thing. If I copy this across, you see that's not always the case. Um, but I'm getting the right formula using that absolute reference. It's a good idea just to check uh, once you get a formula set up to make sure that it's grabbing from the right values by double clicking on it and you see it highlights it and everything's good. Okay, so I'm down here median mode. You can also do min and max are really easy. So min is just equals min and then highlight that range. It's going to give me the minimum value and I can pull that across. Shazam. All right, another little trick here. Um, see how I don't have men bolded and I don't have it right justified? What I can do is use the format painter. So I'm going to come up here and click that once. Oops, I clicked in the wrong spot. Click that once and then see how it has a little brush next to it? Then when I click on something else, it transfers whatever formatting I had for the first thing to the second thing. All right. I'm going to type max and again just max I can pull that across and then we can also calculate standard deviation dot s means it's for a sample in a statistics course we'd go into that in more detail but we're not going to worry about that here um, let me make it all caps though so you, you know what it's doing. Okay, so here I can type standard deviation dot s left paren and then I highlight that range. Boom. Once I got that I can pull it across. I'm set. Um, and I might want to adjust some formatting here so I can come up here Reduce my decimal places to two. I might do that here too to just keep it consistent. Um, you'll notice I don't have the same formatting. So I'm going to do that formatting trick where I go to format, paint, pull down here. Boom. I got that. Okay. So we've got the um, first tab here that we worked on. Oh, let me show you one other thing. Um, anytime you highlight a range like this you'll note down here that Excel is just working in the background with whatever range you have it gives you some useful information it tells you what the average of those numbers are what the count the end of those numbers are and then the sum so there's sometimes when you're working on something you're just like okay let's well, say these first four scores are males you're like well what was the male average you can grab that and you can see that and then you can grab something else and see what that average is. So it's a real handy, quick way to um, just grab some part of the data set and see what's going on there. All right, then we're going to switch over to uh, the next activity here with standard deviation. Just remember for uh, turning stuff in for this assignment, which you're going to do once you get this worked out, like I have it worked out with all these formulas and whatnot, just take a screenshot of this page and then you'll take a screenshot of the next page and then you'll turn that in as a PDF. I would make sure as you're working along to just save what you're working on just to make sure that uh, if something goes wrong you can come back to it and, and grab those screenshots. All right, so we're on now to the second um, page here second tab, second sheet of um, the little intro to Excel that I've given you. Um, let's work through some of these um, steps again. So we've got here, um, what I'm gonna do is work through the concept of standard deviation, just cause I think it has some basic math that we can apply. And it just helps you understanding how standard deviation works is a really key thing for statistics so it doesn't hurt to have a little extra background on this okay so I got my data set here and again I'm going to work through these steps so let's say the first thing I want to do is calculate in um, so I'm just gonna calculate the count and so I can come over here and say equals count left paren highlight that range hit enter boom click on that and it shows me that uh, the range that I'm getting the count for. 
Okay. And then I can also get um, the sum of x both as a formula and a function. So sum of x as a formula is just going to be, um, I'm going to take the hit equals and then this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this equals boom I've got the sum there and um, then I can do it as a function and so I would go equals sum sorry sum then over here equals sum left paren Boom, I've got the sum of that now. Whoops, now those should be the same. Okay, so you can see um, that one's correct. Let's see, what did I do wrong here? Okay, so my count formula, sorry, my sum math formula, I included the count by accident, which is not right. So I need to come over here and erase this last one, and then I should have the same. Does that make sense? I, by accident, I grabbed too far. Um, okay and then okay so that's sum and then I can do the same thing with mean I'm going to give it um, the mean I'm going to calculate manually by going sum oops I already have a sum but I'm going to do that I'm going to take the sum here so I can go equals and then that cell divided by the count cell boom I got the mean so again, if I double click on it, it'll show me the two cells. I'm taking the C12 to 23 divided by 6, and it's giving me the mean. Now, if I come over here and um, just so you don't get confused, I should call this, let's call this average. Okay. I'm going to come up here. Just highlight that, boom. So either if I calculate it using the n and the sum or just as a function, I get the same thing. All right, four, I can also get um, the median. Now, just FYI, the median and the mode, those aren't directly related to standard deviation. These are measures of central tendency, but it doesn't, just for practice sake, I'm going to have you calculate them. All right, so again, median, come up here. Sorry, left paren, come up here. Drag over those, boom. I got my median mode. Can I come up here, drag over those? Boom, I got my mode. I'm just double checking I'm getting things right. Okay, so now I'm going to start building out some of the little components here for the um, standard deviation per se. I'm going to come up here, and one of the key concepts um, with standard deviation is first the concept of a deviation score. And a deviation score is just going to be x minus um, the mean. So x i'm labeling that xm and i'm going to go ahead here and put in um, some formatting so i can see the way these um so i i'm setting apart uh the values up here from the summary statistics down below okay so how do i get x minus the mean i'm going to go four minus whoops sorry i'm going to go equals four minus and then whatever the um, the mean was in the average here so I can click on C14 and I hit enter okay gonna review that absolute versus relative cell reference this is a case where uh, oh I didn't do this formula right let me do that again should do it I said four but I want to put C4 so I highlight that cell 
minus and then the average here. Okay, so make sure you have that right. C4 minus C14. So to get the deviation score, the difference between the score and the mean, I got that four and I subtract the 3.8333. Okay, now I'm also gonna have to go in here because I always wanna pull from the same line for the mean, I'm gonna put the dollar sign in there to lock that line 14. So now if I drag that across down uh, what it's going to do is it's going to advance the first value so that it's picking up the x but the c14 is locked it's always going to be pulling on that mean okay so that's the standard sorry those are the deviation scores um, and just to show you what happens you could, you would think maybe that you could just add up the deviation scores, but unfortunately, uh, when you add up a set of deviation scores, they always add to zero. So the standard deviation formula, the basis of it is to work with what this thing called sum of squares, which is the sum of the square deviation scores. So instead of just summing up x minus x bar, uh, what I have up here, I'm gonna get the sum of the square deviation scores. So I take x minus x bar, that squared, sum that up. Okay, so there's two ways I can calculate that. There's one using this formula. That's the conceptual formula. That's how we think about what's going on. But in practice, we always use this formula, which is the computational formula. So I'm gonna show you now how to build this formula in Excel. So this is the sum of x squared minus the sum of x quantity squared divided by n. Okay, so how, what's that look like? I'm going to come up here and go, um, to, to get this to work out, I need to have the, the x squared. So I'm going to call this x2. Now, just so you know, you can get fancy here. If you want to get that little 2 actually as a squared symbol, um, I can come up to font and go to superscript and then that'll make it squared. Okay, so what's that gonna look like? That's just gonna be um, the X value raised to the second. So that's the little carrot thing. Boom, right there. All right, drag that across there. Shazam. Okay, now I can calculate some other things. So, uh, so I'm going to come down to these that I already have typed in here just because these are a little difficult for you to type. But I got sum of x, sum of x squared. So that is this thing, this first thing. Okay, so how do I calculate that? Well, I'm going to come here and I'm going to say equals, and I'm just going to go sum of these values, and I get that there. So that's 95. So that's sum of x squared. All right, the other one I got to get is sum of x quantity squared. So that's going to take this sum here, which is just sigma x, and then I'm going to square that value. So I say equals there, and then I'm going to take that value and square it. Boom. I got that 529. So to get the sum of squares value, I'm going to take that uh, the sum of x squared, which is that 95 value here, minus, then I got to put in parentheses, the 529 value divided by n. Yeah, so that's sum of squares. So that's E17 that's the 95, right? That sum of x squared 
divided by, or sorry, subtracting from that the sum of x quantity squared divided by n. Okay. All right, and so now I can calculate standard deviation. So I'm going to do it first just as a um, as a formula. So I'm going to say equals square root, and then all I have to do is take this sum of squares divided by n minus 1 and take the square root of that. So that's going to be this C19 value, the sum of squares, divided by, and then in parentheses, the C10 minus 1. Okay, and then standard deviation using the formula, I'm going to come in here and go equals standard deviation dot s and then highlight the range. Boom, and I should get the same thing. Okay, so I'm not wildly concerned that you understand each of these transformations. I'm more concerned just from an Excel standpoint that you kind of understand um, how to do some things like um, squaring things, summing things, and writing out these little formulas. Um, just to make it a little easier to track what's what, I've already had these labels made up, so you can just pull that, drag that over here, and um, um, that tells you exactly what um, formulas are um, building out these different pieces. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. And I hope you have fun with Excel. Um, oh, you know what? I should adjust this just a little bit so that's not blocking that other thing. Okay, so that's it. All right, thank you all.